thank you very much for for the introduction and thank you very much for the uh, the invitation. I'm very glad to participate in this uh, conference. Uh, my talk today is uh, deals uh, about microalgae production and uh, specifically uh, about the the application of artificial intelligence uh, for modeling and control uh, purposes. Uh, I, I belong to the University of Almeria. So first, let me uh, show you where we are. We are uh, in, in Spain, uh, and specifically in the southeast of Spain. Almeria is very well known around the world because of the greenhouses. Uh, uh, it's considered the biggest concentration of greenhouses in, in the world. Um, the main reason is because uh, Almeria is the European city with more sunny hours uh, uh, a year. And because of that, the research uh, topics uh, in our university uh, has been uh, the, the application of modeling and control uh, algorithms for the greenhouse production and also uh, uh, around the solar uh, uh, system to produce uh, energy. Um, so, according to our experience, especially in, in greenhouses, uh, in the last years, we have uh, started working in, in the production of microalgae because uh, somehow they are quite similar to, to the production of, 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 on greenhouses, especially regarding the, the photosynthesis process and especially also regarding to the hierarchical control approach when you want to optimize the growth rate on a specific plant that uh, can be vegetables in the case of the greenhouses and in this case is the, the, the biomass coming from the, from the algae. So uh, in the next slide, I would like just then to introduce you uh, about the microalgae uh, and, and the different problems uh, about modeling and control in, in which we have been working in, in the last years. Microalgae became very popular uh, uh, in the last 10, 15 years because of their biomass. Their biomass is very rich in protein, lipids, um, and, and also uh, carbohydrates, uh, as well as pigments. For that reason, it can be used for so many different purposes, uh, like uh, it can be used for human food, it can be used for cosmetics, animal food, uh, biodiesel, or also to produce biostimulants or biofertilizers, which are very interesting for us to be applied then in greenhouses in, and in agriculture in, in general. In general, um, microalgae are uh, photoautotrophic uh, microorganisms which need light, light, the sunlight uh, to make the photosynthesis, and also nutrients. The nutrients they need are mainly nitrogen and phosphorus and CO2. Uh, microalgae can be produced in two different ways, using uh, fresh water, and in, in that way we add uh, chemical nitrogen and phosphorus, phosphorus as we do in greenhouses. Or on the other hand, we can combine, combine the microalgae cultivation with the wastewater treatment. This last uh, option is very interesting. Uh, it's becoming really, really popular nowadays because at the same time, you are producing microalgae and you are dealing with the wastewater treatment. And in this second option, the nitrogen and phosphorus can be taken directly from the wastewater. We don't need to add extra nitrogen as phosphorus for a chemical point of view. So imagine in, one, in just one process, we clean the water and we produce microalgae in a, uh, from a, a natural point of view. Uh, uh, it's like a clean solution. Uh, and on the other hand, regarding CO2, we can just use uh, flue gases coming from industry or use pure CO2. It depends of, 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 of the application. Uh, so microalgae can be cultivated in, are cultivated, sorry, in reactors, in industrial reactors that can be closed as the one you can see here. These ones are very expensive to build and to maintain. Uh, so it only makes sense when you want to produce high value uh, microalgae biomass. Typically microalgae is produced in this kind of open reactors, which are, are called uh, raceway reactors. They are cheaper 
uh, uh, they can uh, uh, get a very uh, interesting trade-off between running cost uh, um, um, production and uh, incomes. So these are the most common uh, reactors in industry and are the ones we have also here in our facilities in, in Almeria. All the pictures you are seeing now in the slide are our facilities here uh, near to our university. So uh, microalgae is a very complex, the microalgae production is a very complex process, uh, which is affected by so many variables. There are some variables like the sunlight that we cannot control, but there is another variable that we can control to optimize the micro, microalgae growth rate, like the temperature, pH, and dissolved oxygen. So when we are producing uh, uh, microalgae using fresh water, uh, it, these are the only three variables we need to control around an optimal value. Uh, we don't need to uh, take care about the nutrients because they are supplied in excess as we do in greenhouses. However, when we work with wastewater, we combine the microalgae production with wastewater. As I told you before, the nutrients are coming from the wastewater itself. So we don't know exactly the amount of nutrients which are available uh, in the wastewater. And then this is another uh, variable that we also uh, control or, or at least to monitor. So, uh, especially in this case, when we combine, combine uh, microalgae uh, production with wastewater treatment, the problem is especially complex. And then we need to optimize the value for the temperature, pH, and dissolved oxygen for microalgae, but also for the bacteria, which are uh, 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 also growing in the same uh, uh, medium. Because in that case, it's very interesting to see that there is a, like a, a biological consortium between microalgae, microalgae and bacteria. Microalgae uh, uh, release O2 when they do photosynthesis. This O2 oxygen is taken by the bacteria to deal with the wastewater treatment. And after that, they release CO2, nitrogen, and phosphorus, which is taken by the microalgae. So as you can see here, there is a very nice biological uh, uh, loop, which is interacting all the time. But also at the same time, it's really complex for a modeling a control point of view, because you can decide to optimize the temperature pH of dissolved oxygen to produce microalgae, or to optimize the temperature pH of dissolved oxygen to uh, optimize the bacteria working in the wastewater treatment or to get an intermediate balance. This is the interesting point for a modeling or, or control uh, point of view. So uh, then what we have done in the last years uh, is just to apply our experience on greenhouses to the microalgae production in this hierarchical control architecture. We have a upper layer where we, we are worried about economic objectives. We want to increase the production in the next coming weeks. For that reason, we are using weather forecast to predict the weather behavior in the next weeks. And according to that, uh, to determine which are the optimal conditions of the reactors to increase the microalgae production. So, so we send this information uh, to our system to determine that according to these long-term objectives, which is the microalgae growth that we need every day. And then this layer is using the short term for weather forecast, like we only consider a day or 12 hours. And then we say to the local controllers, okay, according to these upper objectives, we need every minute that the temperature, pH, and dissolved oxygen are in a specific optimal values. And then this is also very typical in our approaches from greenhouses. We also want to optimize the production. And for that, in two, three weeks or one month, we have some intermediate objectives in one or two days. And we determine which is the humidity or temperature in the greenhouse every day at every hour or every minute. So, uh, so what we have done is to apply so many solutions. And in this talk, I'm going to show you some of them related 
uh, with uh, database uh, algorithms. Regarding the modeling, as you can uh, realize uh, from my pre previous slides, the microalgae uh, production is a really complex process, uh, not only regarding the biological uh, part, but also the engineering part. As you could see in the pictures, the reactors are really big. So we are pumping the, the microalgae along the channels to get the light and make the photosynthesis. And then we are injecting gases to be sure that we transfer gases from the gas stage to the liquid stage and it's able to the microalgae. Uh, to, to grow. Um, then because of that, uh, we have been working uh, in the development of uh, first principle models. Uh, as you can see here for a, a, a biological point of view, I'm not going to uh, describe uh, the equations into detail. Here you, you have some uh, references, but it's just only to show you some of the few equations regarding to the concentrations, you can see here how many concentrations of different species and nutrients we can find in the system, but also regarding to the engineering model, uh, according to the mass balances that we can find in the system, there are so many equations describing the, the, the distribution, uh, the partial distribution uh, uh, effect uh, in the system, uh, in the liquid and the gas phases. So these models are very interesting to understand the behavior uh, and the dynamics of the system, but because of the biological behavior of the microalgae, they are very complicated to be calibrated and validated according to the real data. And then we, we need to update the coefficients of the models continuously. This was the motivation for us to move or to start working in database solutions using uh, artificial intelligent techniques and mainly neural networks. Our idea is just, was the, was the following, just let's use data from the weather data and some of the real inputs of the system and predict the behavior of the main variables using only data from the real facilities. And then these ideas has been applied for different purposes. Uh, one of them is for microalgae classification because they are microscopic organisms and sometimes it's very difficult to classify them. And on the other hand, to predict the dynamic behavior of some of the important variables along the time, like is the case of the pH, as I will show you uh, later on. In, in the first solution I would like to show you is the microalgae classification. Because as you can see here in these pictures, they are microscope pictures, the microalgae are quite similar, the different species. So it's even for the human beings, it's very difficult to identify being uh, uh, visually. So for that reason, we took more than 5 million of images and we trained our neural networks in such a way that the neural networks is able to uh, classify and identify the species which is uh, uh, just growing in, an, in a reactor. So we take a sample from the reactor, we pass this sample in a microscope, digital microscope, we take the images, and then the images are cut and sent to the neural networks. And the neural networks is able to say, yes, this is the uh, microalgae strain which is growing in that reactor. Uh, so we tested this idea for uh, six different microalgae strains. And as you can see here, the good of fitness is over 19% in most of the cases. So it's, it's very pro a very promising result and it's working uh, uh, quite well for a, 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 a problem which is really complex. On the other hand, as I told you before, some of the other solution uh, we have developed is regarding to the prediction of some of the variables in time. And this solution was applied for the pH. pH is one of the most important variables to be controlled every day. So we have developed a network network which is able to predict the pH behavior in the system just using the weather uh, data and the inputs about the gases that we are applying to the system. And we don't need any sensor of the pH, just the external variables. So we have tested these neural networks in two different reactors, one with fresh water and the other one with waste water. Uh, in yellow, here you can see a, a linear model uh, and in, in red color is the real data. As you can see the real model 
doesn't work very well because of this uh, changing dynamics. And as you can see, obtain different behavior in the different type of reactors. However, our neural networks is able, which is so in blue, is able to follow and capture very well the dynamics in both of the reactors. And as I told you before, these predictions are made only using data as inputs. So we have some other results. Here are only the most uh, relevant, uh, some, an example of the more relevant ones. And regarding the control problems, we, we did the same. Develop some algorithms which are based on data. This is a learning-based model predictive control algorithms. These algorithms work in the following way. We provide a very simple model to the controller, and then we apply to the controller to uh, different type of the reactors and different type of, of weather conditions. And we don't say anything else to the react to the controller. The controller is learning about what is happening in the system and, and is adapting the control signal to keep the pH to the optimal value, which is here so in, in, in so in red color. So I, look, what you are seeing uh, uh, what I'm showing here is the result for the two different types of the reactors for with fresh water and wastewater for a cloudy day and a sunny day. As you can see, the behavior is practically the same for two systems with two different dynamics. And the controller is exactly the same controller in both cases. So the system is adapting to the dynamic of the system based on the data which is taken from the sensors. And on the other hand, we also develop uh, another solutions based on uh, regression uh, tree models, where the idea is just let use a fixed controller and then according to the weather conditions and the rest of the variables that we can measure in the system, we are adapting the controller uh, based on that. Uh, and here, and here you can see how the controller is a classical controller, a proportional integral controller, very basic one. And we are adapting here the, the, the parameters of the system uh, to adapt of the changes in the process and to keep the pH near to the optimal value. Uh, again, you can see here two different cases for a sunny day and a, uh, sorry, so here a sunny day and a cloudy day with so many passing clouds. So uh, this is just a summary of, of the solutions we have obtained for this process. We are very happy uh, of the results because uh, in the past we were working all the time only with the first principle models. And the problem was that, the, as I told you before, that we need to recalibrate permanently the parameters, uh, which is a very uh, uh, time consuming uh, uh, task. For that reason, we decided to move to the database solutions. Um, it's working very well. The only concern and the only problem with this is that you need so many data uh, to train the models uh, and then uh, to train the models um, and, uh, and then to follow the dynamics of, of the system. But if you have available this amount of data, uh, the solutions work perfectly. Uh, so just to end my, my talk uh, and about future works, I would like to mention you a new project uh, in which we are working. It's called Real Realm. It's a very interesting project where we are combining greenhouses with, with the microalgae production in such a way that we are taking, as you know, the effluent coming the water effluent coming from the greenhouses is very rich in nitrogen and phosphorus. Uh, and then we are going to take this effluent from the greenhouses and to pass this uh, water rich in that nutrients to the microalgae. So we take this water to produce microalgae and at the same time as we are removing the, 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 these nutrients, we can clean the water and reduce the water for irrigation in the greenhouses. But also at the same time, we will use the biomass of the microalgae to produce biostimulants and biopesticides that can be applied in the greenhouses. So it's like a loop in such a way that we can combine the production of the uh, uh, two systems. It's a, it's a project which started like uh, uh, seven months ago 
and it's a four-year project and a European project of 10 million of euros. Um, we are very happy to, to work on that and we, we will ensure that we can uh, obtain promising results. So that's all from my side and thank you very much for your attention.